Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is the AC voltage divider rule. Our objective is to learn to apply the AC voltage divider rule to quickly and directly solve for voltage across individual elements in series AC circuits. Bottom line up front, the AC voltage divider rule is the DC voltage divider rule using phasers. I cannot make it much simpler than that. This lecture therefore operates under the presumption the viewer is intimately familiar with the DC voltage divider rule from way back in the Basic Electronics 1 DC Circuit Analysis playlist available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Additionally, it is presumed the viewer has an understanding of basic series AC circuit properties. In our previous lecture on series AC circuits, we learned current through elements in a series circuit is the same when the sum of voltage rises equals the summation of voltage drops for any closed loop. These are the most fundamental properties of series AC circuits. If you recall, the DC voltage divider rule was a simple proportionality equation that allowed a user to quickly and directly solve for voltage across an individual element of interest without having to solve for total impedance and current values. Likewise, for the AC voltage divider rule. The AC voltage divider rule states that the voltage across the element of interest, Vx, is equal to the impedance of the element of interest, Zx, divided by the impedance for that series path, Z single prime, times the voltage across that path, V single prime. Note that the ratio of Zx over C single prime must be calculated first, and then one would multiply the result in proportion times the voltage across that path. As an illustrated example of the AC voltage divider rule, consider the following series AC circuit comprised of two elements. The first element is a 300 ohm resistor, and the second element is a 12 microfarad capacitor. The source has an effective value of 120 volts, and an excitation frequency of 60 Hz. Let's say we're being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element. Note we are not being asked to solve for current, nor are we being asked to solve for total impedance. Educationally entertaining as these properties may be, they are merely diversions delaying us from reaching our intended goal. Let's see if we can use the AC voltage divider rule to quickly and directly solve for the voltage across each element. The complex impedance of the 300 ohm resistor is 300 ohms at an angle of zero degrees. Let's call this impedance Z1. The complex impedance of the 12 microfarad capacitor at an excitation frequency of 60 Hz would be 221 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Let's call this impedance Z2. The AC voltage divider rule solving for V1 suggests that V1 equals Z1 divided by Z1 plus Z2 times our source voltage E. Substituting in our given values yields V1 to be 96.6 volts at an angle of 36.4 degrees. Similarly, the AC voltage divider rule solving for V2 suggests that V2 equals Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2 times our source voltage E. Substituting in our given values yields V2 to be 71.2 volts at an angle of negative 53.6 degrees. There you have it. Two quick applications of the AC voltage divider rule yielded our desired results without any delay, toil, or tears. Given we saved so much time using the AC voltage divider rule, we've got ample opportunities to check our work. There's two principal means of doing so, one via Kirchhoff's voltage law and the other one via Ohm's law. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this series circuit suggests that E equals V1 plus V2. The sum of voltage rises equals the sum of voltage drops. Given we solve for the voltage drops across individual elements using AC voltage divider rule, we could substitute the results of one of our calculations to verify our second value. Let's do so for V2. An algebraic rearrangement of the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation for this series circuit solving for V2 suggests that E minus V1 equals V2. Substituting our given value for source voltage and our calculated value for V1 yields V2 to be 71.2 volts at an angle of negative 53.6 degrees, confirming our earlier calculations with the AC voltage divider rule. Additionally, one can also use Ohm's law to verify the results obtained using the AC voltage divider rule. Because these two elements are in series with one another, they should experience the same current. Source current Is equals I1, which equals I2. Ohm's law solving for current demonstrates impedance Z1 experiences 322 milliampers at an angle 36.4 degrees. Similarly, Ohm's law solving for current demonstrates that impedance Z2 also experiences 322 milliampers at an angle of 36.4 degrees. Current through these elements is in fact equal. This is to be expected given they are in series with one another. All right, let's try another illustrated example of the AC voltage divider rule, this time featuring a series combination of three elements. In an effort to make this lecture compact, note I've already taken the liberty of calculating the impedance for each element. 
first element, Z1, has an impedance of 150 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. Most likely, this is a purely resistive element. The second element, Z2, has an impedance of 86 ohms at an angle of 85 degrees. Most likely, this is an inductive element that features a tiny amount of internal resistance. Finally, the third element, Z3, has an impedance of 60 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Most likely, this is a purely capacitive element. The source has a value of 80 volts at an angle of 0 degrees. We're being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element using the AC voltage divider rule. Again, note we are not being asked to solve for current, nor are we being asked to solve for total impedance. Our only mission is to swing the AC voltage divider rule over our head, charge into the jungle, and come back carrying three voltage values slung over our shoulder as quickly as possible. Note the general use AC voltage divider rule formula doesn't change despite the addition of more elements in series. The general use AC voltage divider rule formula states that the voltage across the element of interest Vx is equal to the impedance of the element of interest Zx divided by the impedance for that series path Z single prime times the voltage across that path V single prime. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The AC voltage divider rule solving for V1 suggests that V1 equals Z1 divided by Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 times our source voltage E. Substituting in our given values yields V1 to be 75.2 volts at an angle of negative 9.3 degrees. Similarly, the AC voltage divider rule solving for V2 suggests that V2 equals Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 times our source voltage E. Substituting our given values yields V2 to be 43.1 volts at an angle of 75.7 degrees. Finally, the AC voltage divider rule solving for V3 suggests that V3 equals Z3 divided by Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 times source voltage E. Substituting our given values yields V3 to be 30.1 volts at an angle of negative 99.3 degrees. As a means of checking our work, an Ohm's law manipulation for any or all of the voltage values obtained using the AC voltage divider rule solving for current yields 501.3 milliamperes at an angle of negative 9.3 degrees, thus confirming the most fundamental property of series AC circuits. Notably, current through elements in series is the same. If you're looking for more illustrated examples of the AC voltage divider rule, fear not. I'm going to publish another supplemental lecture entirely dedicated to illustrated examples of series AC circuit analysis. During this lecture, you'll find ample opportunities to practice the AC voltage divider rule. Additionally, the AC voltage divider rule will be used extensively during our analysis of more complex series parallel circuits. Before we close out this particular lecture, allow me to take a moment to issue a collective Oh Really to the numerous viewers that have taken time to comment in all caps awash with spelling errors about the utility and application of the DC voltage divider rule, which I'm certain this lecture on the AC voltage divider rule has provoked anew. Common complaint these fickle mushheads make about the voltage divider rule is my broad statement promising voltage values without the necessity of calculating total impedance or current. They're rather quick to point out that the denominator, i.e. the bottom part of the ratio, the summation of impedances in that path, is the total impedance. This is true only for purely series circuits where one is considering the complete circuit. I'm urging you to think beyond this limited perspective. Consider applications of the AC voltage divider rule for smaller series paths inside larger series parallel circuits. Consider a series parallel circuit consisting of four known impedances, Z1, Z2, Z3, and Z4. This is admittedly a little more complicated. However, Z2 and Z3 are clearly in series with one another. Any current traveling through impedance element Z2 must also travel through impedance element Z3. If one knew the voltage differential between node B and node D, this would be a perfect setup for the AC voltage divider rule. The voltage across a series path is known, VBD, as are the impedances within this series path, Z2 and Z3. One could easily use the AC voltage divider rule to solve for V2 or V3. Again, the general use AC voltage divider rule says nothing about total impedance for the larger series parallel circuit but rather only the impedance of the series path under consideration, in this case Z2 and Z3. We'll have ample opportunities to employ the AC voltage divider rule when we examine series parallel AC circuit analysis in later lectures. In conclusion, we learned to quickly and directly calculate the voltage across elements in a series configuration without the necessity of solving for total impedance nor current using the AC voltage divider rule. Additionally, we briefly explored applications of the AC voltage divider rule outside of pure series circuits. 
Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank <laughs> you.